All right, students. So <clears throat> we are going to talk about tools and measurement notes. One way to collect data is to take measurements. These would be like um, quantitative observations because measurements usually deal with numbers and amounts of things. Standard measurements are very important. So for example, cooks use pinches and dashes. So if you wanted to replicate their recipe, it'd be very, very difficult to do so. So we have to use instruments in scientific ways. So we have to use standard measurements. So we know that a cup is a cup. The system used in most of the world today is the International System of Units, or the SI system, which is based on the metric system. And the SI system is easy to use because it's based on multiples of 10. Now, we don't use that here in the U.S. We actually call our unit of measure a customary unit or a customary system. But in science class, because we have to have a standard unit of measure, sci the scientific community does use the metric system. And in the metric system, prefixes tell you which multiple of 10 is being used. So there's different measurements. The first one is length. The basic unit in the metric system is the meter. Um, but you can always add prefixes to that, such as centimeters, millimeters, and also kilometers. Um, the tools that we use for that are the meter stick and the ruler um, and some other ones to measure some larger distances. Area is the size of the surface of an object, um, and you would have to measure the length and the width and then use the equation. So area is not something that you can measure directly. It's more of a calculation. When you take a meter times a meter, you get a meter squared. So this should actually be a superscript where it's above. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video, try this practice problem, and then when you come back, we'll have our answer. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to practice, but we want to take the length and the width, and because these two numbers are being multiplied together, it does not matter in what order you multiply them. So we're going to take 3.14 meters times 5.75 meters, and let me get my calculator out here for a second, okay? It really is a calculator, I'm not texting. So we're going to take 3.145 times 5.75 and that's going to be 18 and I get a lot of decimals okay so we need to round notice how in our measurements one student measured as 3.145 so she had three decimals but this other student only had two decimals so we need to round our answer to two decimals so we need our answer to be 18.08 meters squared I hope you got that Volume is another one of those measurements that we cannot measure directly, but we have to do um, a calculation. Now, for regularly shaped objects, such as boxes or cubes or anything else, you can use the length times width times height to figure out the volume. So here's another practice problem. Go ahead and pause the video, and then you can look for the explanation. Okay, so we are just going to multiply all three of these numbers together. And please, 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 whenever you guys are doing calculations like this, you need to get in the habit of writing down every single unit right after the number. Okay, so I have 45 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 86 centimeters. You have to get in the habit of writing all of those things down. Okay, so again, I'm going to use my calculator here. I'm going to take 45 times 20 times 86. And I get a really, really big number. I get 77,400. And because this is centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, this is actually centimeters cubed. Okay. And if you ask me if you can use a calculator, I will always say yes. Now, there's another way to measure volume because sometimes we need to measure the volume of irregular objects or of liquids. And so we do that with a graduated cylinder. The basic unit of liquid volume is the liter, but you could also have you could also have milliliters or for our regular objects it's a centimeter cubed. So if we have an irregular object, say a rock, we can't measure the length and the width and the height because it's not a regularly shaped object. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a graduated cylinder and we're going to read the amount of liquid before and we're going to read the amount of liquid after and then we're going to subtract. 
This is called displacement and is the standard way to measure solid objects of irregular shapes. The next unit we're going to talk about is mass. The basic unit is the gram. Some common prefixes are the kilogram and the milligram. Especially if you've ever taken like a prescription medicine, all of your prescription drugs are measured in milligrams. And so anytime if you're going to go into any type of medical profession, you're going to have, be very familiar with what a milligram is. And that's also one of the reasons why we're going to do a lot of metric conversions. The tool that we use for this is the triple beam balance, and we'll show you that um, in the lab here in a minute. Okay. Now, weight does not equal mass, so anytime that you're taking the mass of something, please be careful to use the actual term mass and not weight, because the weight of something depends on how much gravity there is. Now, normally, because every object that we're going to take the mass of is going to be on Earth, the gravity is going to be the same, but it's, it's, a, it's a verbiage, it's a vocabulary thing. Temperature is the measure of how hot or cold something is. The basic unit is the Kelvin, which has to do with the molecules moving back and forth. Zero or absolute zero on the Kelvin scale is when the molecules stop moving. We haven't been able to reach this temperature yet in the lab, but they've gotten really, really, really close. So they use a more convenient scale called Celsius. So Celsius is the typical scale. Now here in the U.S., our customary unit is Fahrenheit. That's just it's all relative. That scale is not based on the Kelvin scale and it does not go up or down by the same unit. So here we have Celsius. So you can see that the freezing point of water is zero on the Celsius scale and that was done intentionally. Um, and on the Fahrenheit scale it's 32. So here are some common units. So just to kind of recap what we talked about, we talked about different units of measure such as length, volume, mass, and temperature. Okay, so you can see that here, this is going to be a really convenient thing for you guys to come back to. The standard unit is there in bold print, and then you can see some other common units as well. And here you can kind of see some of the ways that you can convert between them before we go over that in more detail. Density is the ratio of the mass to the volume. And every known element on the periodic table has its own density, and it's a very defiant. It's one of those things that we um, define part of the element. Density is a calculation. You can't measure it directly. Um, so you have to first measure the mass and then measure the volume and then you have to divide between the two. So again, density can often be used to identify unknown materials. Thanks for watching.